This video will discuss the virial equation of state as another way to calculate the properties of non-ideal gases. So from our previous video, we have Z, our compressibility factor, defined as the pressure times the molar volume over the gas constant times the temperature of a gas, PV bar over RT. For an ideal gas, this is equal to one, but for non-ideal gases, this could be anywhere between zero and infinity. So we have our Z is going to be defined here as a Taylor series in one over molar volume, which one over molar volume you might notice is the density. So we have one plus this coefficient B2V of T divided by V bar plus B3V of T divided by V bar squared plus, and then the series would continue over there after that, B4V over V cubed, etc., etc. So what are these various coefficients that we're getting here? So uh, B2V of T is called the second virial coefficient. B3V is called the third virial coefficient, etc. from there on. So, and these also depend on temperature. So for a given temperature, there's a given value of this second virial coefficient and a third virial coefficient, and those all change with the different temperatures. Um, and so what the set of virial coefficients get us is a, an expression for what the compressibility factor of this gas is. It really tells us what is the relationship between our molar volume and our pressure and temperature when we don't have an ideal gas. So we could alternatively express this as a Taylor series in pressure because pressure and molar volume have an inverse relationship. So we could say 1 plus B2P of T times P plus 1 plus B3P of T times P squared, etc., etc. It's the same kind of idea, just with slightly different coefficients, B2P instead of B2V. All right, so if we know all these virial coefficients, we can calculate the compressibility factor, and then we know pressure, molar volume, and temperature. All right, so where do these virial coefficients come from? So we know for an ideal gas, the compressibility factor is going to be 1, and thus all these virial coefficients would be 0. So any non-zero zero value of these virial coefficients indicates some degree of the particles interacting with one another. So these virial coefficients depend on the interactions between the particles of the gas. So U of R being the potential energy as a function of the separation of these gas particles. So U of R being, as I said, interparticle interactions, the change in the potential energy based off of how far these particles are apart. So one model, which we'll discuss in the next video for how these particles might interact, looks like this kind of equation here, where at, at short range they repel each other because they have some effective volume. At medium range they attract one another slightly, and at long range they don't interact. So the gas becomes ideal at high molar volumes because the gas particles aren't interacting at long distance. At intermediate distances, they attract one another, leading to, from our van der Waals equation of state, a value of the parameter A. And at short range, they repel each other, leading to a value of the van der Waals parameter B. So there's actually an expression, depending on the form of this uh, interaction function here, where the second virial coefficient as a function of temperature is equal to the following expression, minus 2 pi times Avogadro's number times the integral from 0 to infinity, 0 being the minimum distance they can be apart, infinity being the maximum. Of And then don't worry about this quantity too much, it's just meant to be an example of e to the minus u of r over Boltzmann constant times temperature, minus 1 quantity times r squared integrated with respect to r. Now the equation doesn't matter so much it, in its form, I'm just showing you that there is a way to calculate these virial coefficients if you know how the particles interact with, with distance. There's a, an expression for the third virial coefficient that's more complicated than this. The fourth is even more complicated. But for the second, we can actually write it down in, in fairly short order. Okay, so I said if the second virial coefficient equals zero, then 
or if, if all the virial coefficients equal zero, the compressibility factor is one and the gas is ideal. So at very low pressures or very high molar volumes, very low pressures, P squared is approximately zero. So at very low pressures or very high molar volumes, it's really only this, these first two terms that matter. So we just have the linear term, only the second virial coefficient matters at very low pressures or very high molar volumes. So if the second virial coefficient of the gas is zero at a given temperature, the gas is ideal for low temperatures. It's only non-ideal once P squared starts to become non-zero. So the temperature at which the second virial coefficient is equal to zero is called the boil temperature of the gas. That's the temperature at which the gas is ideal for an extended period of pressure and or molar volume. Okay, so this is the virial equation of state. Our compressibility factor is a Taylor series in inverse molar volume or pressure. We get a set of virial coefficients which tell us how the pressure, molar volume, and temperature are related. These depend on the interactions of the particles, which we can compute, but generally you're going to look these up in tables and then plug them into the equation, uh, taking care to check that you have the proper units and your conversion between these units to molar volume are the correct choice.